Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of the Man once again, and today we are doing another um, manga first impressions type of video, although today we are going to be covering one of the newest um, series that are available on Shonen Jump. Today we're going to be looking at the first volume, uh, the first chapter, sorry, of Candy Flurry. Now this actually released last week, and today is Saturday, so tomorrow is Sunday, and the second chapter is going to come out tomorrow, but I wanted to sit down and talk about this you know, since I read it, and I just hadn't had the time to do so. So I'm going to do it now, but um, do, you know, be aware that by the time you guys watch this, or by the time I release this, there's already probably going to be another uh, chapter out. But this is all based on the first chapter, which I don't remember exactly how many pages it was, but it was, I think it was around 40 pages. Um, but yeah, this is more of a conversation than it is really a review. I still want to go over the premise and stuff. So let's just jump into it. Now, Candy Flurry seems to be a very uh, kind of interesting type of story. Like, it, 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 it's based on this idea that there's a hundred different types of special candies that were distributed across Japan uh, during some like special event from this weird company, which is very similar to the whole idea of the golden ticket in Willy Wonka. If we're talking about the version uh, that was released like 20 years ago ish like with uh, Johnny Depp and, and basically these 100 different candies gave 100 different people superpowers and there was only one type of each candy and uh, each person that bought one managed to get that power now apparently disaster struck Tokyo in the form of this lollipop user this uh, candy person using lollipops to destroy Tokyo. And that's what we're kind of like set up in the story. We're in Tokyo post the lollipop destruction thing. And the world has changed, obviously. Now, candy user users are all basically criminals. Um, and they have an antagonistic force called the Reset, which is the, uh, it's spelled R-E-C-E-T-T-E -T -T -E, and it's French. And I think the, the, the name actually means recipe in French, but they're essentially like hunters for these candy users. It's just kind of like uh, in uh, Chainsaw Man, this would be like the equivalent of the public services, like the, um, the people that, you know, Benji works with. And the uh, candy users are essentially the devils, right? And it focuses on this girl that happens to have these uh, lollipop powers. But the whole thing is that she was not the one that created the accident. And um, we follow her as she starts to interact with this guy that goes to her school that happens to be part of the reset. So it's very, very cool. It sets up this kind of like Chainsaw Man-esque storyline, which is very cool because it's like the same type of story but in a completely opposite aesthetic direction. And I thought that was super interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it's super cool. I really did enjoy it. I think the art was really pretty. Um, it, it, was, it was a very kind of like kitty, cartoony, very stylized with huge heads, big eyes, and really cute bodies, right? And it's super interesting. Like I really just enjoyed the aesthetic of it. It's so colorful, it's so pretty looking. Um, but it, it's so interesting because that doesn't really fit the kind of cutesy candy land feel that it has. Like it really does feel like someone just watched Willy Wonka and they were like, let's make a, a demon hunting series about Willy Wonka's like weird factory where he had the Oompa Loompas and they were like doing the dance number and stuff. Or like that whole, that one sequence in uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl where they're like chilling on the um on the milk river and they're going through the cookies and stuff um it's a super cool concept but yeah like i really did enjoy it. I, I it really to me it felt so much like chainsaw man that it was actually kind of weird like i was like mm, why why is this so similar feeling now it, that's not to say that it's like basically chainsaw man but cutesy because that's not really true. And in fact, it has a lot of um, styles and references that are very similar to other stories. Like the way that this first chapter was set up felt very similar to one of the early chapters in Bleach, where out of nowhere, Rukia shows up at school 
and she interacts with Ichigo and they have this whole kind of like back and forth thing and then they have the whole um you know explanation of the powers near the end and I thought that was really cool there's also this element of like uh I don't know like um magic school elements that were interesting and the comedy was really funny like it like well actually it wasn't really that funny but the concept was very humorous like it's ridiculous that this super cute nice girl ends up being like this user uh, like this, this candy user that happens to be linked to this gigantic horrible thing that happened in japan and she also is very cutesy and nice but then she has like a deeper more like <laughs> crazy personality hidden behind that and i think that's super funny i really did enjoy it uh the the main character's girl and the main girl character's name is sugumi and the boy character that was introduced is misaki midori which I think means something green, like Midori, I think it means green. So that's pretty interesting. Um, and I really like him because he, he's dressed like, like a ninja, but he has this handle thing that he opens and it turns into giant fork. And I thought that was hilarious. Um, and the girl has a giant lollipop that she uses uh, as like a, 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 like Harley Quinn's hammer basically, but it's like a lollipop. And it's so cool. Like uh, it's, just, it's just really enjoyable. I really did find it super, super fun. Now, I really enjoyed the way that the mystery was set up. This is like this is very clearly a a, a demon hunting or a, a bad guy hunting storyline, very similar to Chainsaw Man, like I said, and very similar to Bleach as well. But it's set up as a mystery, like something needs to be accomplished in a way that is more of a thriller than a straight up action story. And I thought that was super cool. I really did enjoy that. Um, it, it's a nice kind of change of pace a little bit from what all of the other battle shonen that we have seen so far is, right? So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this moves on and how, you know, things develop. The battle sequences were also pretty cool. Um, it was a lot of um, weird superpowers. Like I said, uh, the, the boy Midori had this like giant fork thing, which is really cool. One of the characters that showed up was a donut user. And what he had was like, like he had donuts growing out of his arms and he was using them as wheels to climb up uh, like a building. And that was really fun as well. And he kind of went berserk at the end. And it was like really odd. And the art style made him look really monstrous, even though he was a donut guy. And then uh, there's a lot of cool action shots with uh, Sugumi using her lollipop to, you know, attack that I really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, and the ending was really, really good because it really sets up this whole kind of idea that she knows that she's going to be immediately linked to the problem, but she needs to, you know, come out and say something to someone. And she just happened to choose this Midori kid. And hopefully they can work to clear her name, essentially. And I, I really liked it. Like, I don't know why, because I this is like aesthetically not something I find that interesting. Um, or I didn't think I would find it interesting, but I actually ended up loving it so, so much. I think it's Super pretty looking, it's super funny, and it, it's a really humorous kind of setup to what seems to be a relatively dark story, and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope it doesn't get axed, um, and I hope that, you know, it does really well, because I really hope that we get some really awesome uh, uh, c covers for it. So, yeah, that's it for today. I, that's all I had to say about Candy Flurry. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about Candy Flurry. Are you guys interested in reading it? And if so, um, and if you have read it, let me know what you're looking forward to seeing further on in the story. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and see you guys later.